coming to you from PCA 2022 in Las Vegas, Nevada. Very Felicity here, part of, part of the Cigar Coop Coalition. Family behind the camera, Will Cooper over there. We're standing, I, I keep saying sitting. We're standing here with the awesome James Brown of Oveja Negra. James, so good to see you again. Good to see you too, man. Thanks for coming by. I'm really excited to talk about a lot of the great stuff that's going on. In fact, we're, we start here at the Emilio, which we all know about the Emilio Suave. Yeah. I always have to stop myself from saying Suave. <laughs> Suave, but you guys are releasing a new addition to the Suave family, the Maduro. So tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, so Suave is a cigar that's been around for a long time, you know, before we took over Emilio. And we took it over, re, kind of reblended it, rebranded it, um, and it's been hugely successful for us. The James and Brown twist. We got exactly, it. yeah, I gave it the Oveja uh, fix there. So, um, but yeah, so we wanted to, since it's so popular, we wanted to do something a little bit different with it and add to the line. And so we decided to do a Maduro version of it. The Maduro Suave is going to be the same filler components as the Connecticut Suave, uh, except with an Ecuadorian Maduro wrapper. Perfect. So uh, the three Maduro, uh, the three Vitolas that we see on display are going to be the three ones available. Exactly. Six by fifty, five by fifty Robusto, and a seven by forty eight Churchill. Correct. Yeah. And uh, when can uh, retailers expect to see these on the shelves? Uh, they're going to be out around September, so about mid August, early September at the latest. Sure. Yeah. And the MSRP ranges from. Um, you know, it's going to be with the Emilio stuff. We try to keep things uh, very kind of middle of the road. So these are going to be right in the nine ten dollar range. Yeah. Terrific. I mean, great, great, great value for yeah. a great cigar, and I'm really excited to try that because I love when we, we, like you said, you put that little Oveja Negra twist on things, and uh, the new wrapper on those components will be sure will be something I definitely want to try. Yeah. Speaking of something I definitely want to try, you guys are announcing something, we're launching something here, yeah. uh, kind of the audio file, which is the newest from, newest from Emilio. Tell us a little bit about this project. Yeah, so we wanted to do a new limited release for Emilio. Um, you know, in Emilio, we have kind of a lot of different things going on with the branding, but kind of one of the staple things that we've had, like with the side one, side two, is kind of this music influence. Same thing with the Cavatina. Um, and so we kind of went down that road with the new cigar, the audio file. It's going to be a little bit different than most of the Emilio. So Emilio, kind of across the board, has been very focused on being medium bodied, uh, full flavor, and kind of something, you know, for everybody. And the audio file is going to kind of step that up for Emilio. So it's going to be more of a medium to full bodied cigar, um, Nicaraguan Dominican fillers, and an Ecuadorian Maduro wrapper on that one. Really excited for that. Now, when I first saw this just a few moments ago, I mean, other than the music component that kind of yeah. brings the Emilio family together, it, it has it has that Black Works kind of adventureness yeah. to it a little bit. Um, as you kind of build out these portfolios, and they, while they are very distinct and everything, does that you know does that become challenging at all? Um, sometimes, yeah. I would say you know with with Black Label and Black Works. We're obviously working in a specific theme, right? So the brands have a very clear identity. Um, so we try to keep the artwork very true to the brand. What I love about Emilio is, you know, we're, uh, for me, I'm able to kind of play around and do a lot of unique and different things that I wouldn't normally do uh, for Black Label and Black Works. So from the artistic side of it, I really enjoy new projects for Emilio because I get to kind of experiment and, you know, do some things that have been in my head for a while. So, you know, see a lot of use of color and things like that with the artwork. And so I, I, it's it's fun and it's cool. Well, with all pun intended, I love it when you play around because yeah. that leads us to some really exciting things, including what you've always kind of been said is your studio, which is Black yeah. Works. So let's take a look over here at Black Works and see what's going on over here. So we've got the, uh, I mean, some news that came down uh, yesterday was that you're bringing a perennial favorite of one of mine and yeah. so many of your, uh, so many of your fans and consumers is the Killer Bee is now regular production. Yeah, the Killer Bee Connecticut. Yeah. So we, um, you know, Killer Bee has been around for a long time, the Green Hornet. And um, a few years ago, we did the Killer Bee Connecticut, which was a huge success for us. It was actually the first Connecticut cigar that we ever put out. And... You know, people just absolutely fell in love with it. It kind of had its own cult following, people seeking it out. And so uh, we gave it some time and, and wanted to bring it back and just decided that, you know, it's it's popular enough that, you know, we didn't want to frustrate people again with it being in and out so quick. And so we decided to incorporate it into the core line of the Blackwork Studios. 
And so, but the project that I think a lot of the Blackworks fans out there are uh, really clamoring at for. Yeah. Last year it was, uh, last year you guys put out a fantastic, beautiful project. But this is a beautiful cigar in the project. Yeah. And it's the Shaolin. So talk yeah. to us a little bit about that. Yeah, so, you know, like I said, Killer Bees, over the years, have had a lot of different iterations, um, and we kind of had a lot of different versions of it that we played with over the years that were on the back burner. And so, uh, the Shaolin was one of them. Um, we wanted to do this really cool, like bellicoso shape, which is kind of where the idea started with. And so, yeah, it's a it's kind of a beefed up version of your regular killer bee. Um, so it has uh, a, a bit more strength, a bit more uh, spice component to it. And with the wrappers, we ended up doing a Mexican San Andres with a Connecticut shade uh, twist on it, and then the Candela closed foot. And so, yeah, it's a it's a really cool project, and you know, I'm really excited about it. I think it's one of the best versions of the bee that we've done so far. I love hearing that. That's yeah. really exciting. I mean, and, and to cap it all off, it's it's beautiful as well. It's a, it's an art in a cigar. Yeah. Um, I'm every year, James. I get more and more amazed by what you're able to do with tobacco. It, not just the way it looks, but the way it smokes, the complexity of it, that, which it just plays on my palate, and the palates of so many of your fans. I mean, I mean do, you, do you ever think you'll get tired of playing around as we've kind of been talking about? I don't think so, man. You know, it's that's what I'm really passionate about. You know, as I always tell people, like, it's great having the brands and the, and the U.S. side of things, but really my driving force to get up every day is to make cigars so I love being at the factory and, and experimenting and trying to do things in a new and unique way and you know cigars like the Shaolin allow me to do that and so it's always exciting to put out a new stick like that and really not only showcases you know what I do as a blender but it really showcases the artisanal quality that our rollers and, and bancheros have you know as far as making cigars. Well anyone that knows your backstory knows your journey James knows that it was long road to get to this and uh, and with, filled with amazing adventures and amazing things and I know I speak for all of your fans out there that we're so glad that you landed on this one we've kind of taken a speaking of journeys we kind of taken a reverse journey here so let's end yep. we're all starting with Black Label so sure. what's going on with Black Label this yeah year? so Black Label this year you know um, we to kind of finish out the year we're gonna have morphine coming back so we gave morphine a break last year so We've been making that since 2014, so it's our oldest LE. Um, and last year we wanted to get some new stuff out and bring back the viaticum, so we put morphine on hold. And then this year we're bringing it back, um, and we're doing the uh, the Corona, the Lancero, and then we brought back the uh, box pressed uh, Torpedo Robusto, which was one of my favorite Vitolas that we did in the past. Uh, and it's been quite a few years since we did that cigar, so very excited to have that one back out as well. James, thank you so much for taking some time yeah, with us definitely, today. Man. We're really looking forward to everything from the Veja Negra brands.